I'm Tom. And I'm Molly. Welcome to Forensic Gameology, hosted by ForensicGameology.com. Reviews for science. In seven minutes or less. Champions of Midgard is a worker placement game set in the Norse mythology type? Are no? you asking me or yeah, you telling me? Yeah, I'm asking me? you. And yes. I'm telling them I'm asking you. <laughs> uh, who would know? You or me? Uh, well, there are some Norwegian things here. So anyway, so Norwegian things, and I'm guessing it's from all of, you know, the Norse, Nordic countries. So worker placement, you place your workers to get dice, which help you fight. You place your workers to fight. The point is to get the most points at the end of the game, and you get points mostly by fighting. You can get points in a few other ways by getting these cards that have end game bonuses that can be pretty huge. By buying ships, you can buy some ships and get some points. But mostly it's going to be through through your fighting that you're going to get points. So whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. I can talk more, but let's just jump simplicity versus complexity. I think this game looks intimidating. There are a lot of spaces on the board, a lot of different things, a lot of symbols that you'd have to look in the rule book to figure out what it means. There's different faces on each of these dice. Some of them have more double hits than others. This one doesn't have a single shield. This one does. Um, there's there's uh, fighting with these boats. You take the boat down to fight one of these guys, and if you get a bunch of these different colors, you get sets of points. You have to sail through... Um, whirlpools possibly or be lost and on top of that feed your people with food and if you can't feed them they die and then some of these say you can't bring black dice here and this guy says you can't bring white dice and so there's just there's a lot going on but there's a really easy to understand flow because it's worker placement you place you do the action where you placed and then the game continues and so you only get the one action per turn I think it makes it very it makes it less complex than it looks. I, I would have to agree. There are a few timing things that once you play a few rounds, you, you get. Some of these you don't, like when you fight, you place your worker and then you fight after everything is done. Whereas when you're picking up dice, you get that immediately. So some things you do right away when you place and some things you wait on. But like, I, like Tom said, that comes pretty quickly after you play. And so there is a lot going on there's a lot to manage-ish, but after one or two rounds, you will get it. And so there's not actually that much. Luck versus strategy. I think there's a lot of strategy in this game, but because you're rolling dice and some of these have blank sides, I mean, typically you're going to fight somebody with the highest the highest uh, defense is like this big troll here. He needs three hits to kill him, whereas this monster's Fenrir cub only needs one. So you only have to, you only have to roll one hit for this, but I have gone up against a troll and like a Draugr on the same turn, or I think even came down here and fought one of these uh, Eljotnars. And, <laughs> and and I rolled all blanks each time, and I lost in last place horribly, and it was evident from the beginning. So, I mean, you can't, can't get out of the fact that there is luck, but they give you reroll tokens that if you don't use, give you more points. There's definitely strategy. What you do on the board matters. I think there's a healthy balance. Uh, but I mean, there's there's definitely enough of both. Don't think you're coming into just a solid euro or a straight dice chucking. I think it has a, a healthy balance of both. I agree. The dice makes it lucky, but there's so many ways. Like Tom mentioned, the reroll you can reroll. You can pick up these reroll tokens multiple ways by fighting these guys. But you can also pay for them. You can also look at these cards because these these are the bad things that can happen before you fight meaning you could get lost because you're going on a journey. You're taking your people on a journey, and you could get lost, and so you have to spend extra food, so you could lose some food. But there's a way to look at those before you go. So that, that helps you mitigate and, or prepare for what you might face. So I do, there is, it is dice rolling, so you never know what can happen, but generally it comes out more often than not the way you, you planned. So I think you can mitigate that luck. Fun versus boring. This game is fun. To me, it speaks to the Norwegian. I'm I'm not Norwegian, but I lived in Norway. And so, like, it has Stav Church, which are the wooden churches that I, I visited in Norway. And I just think that's cool. So that so immediately grabs me with that. And trolls are huge in Norway. And so I... I trolls are huge everywhere. Well, okay, fair enough. But there's a lot of them in Norway, I guess I should have said. And so it, that, that grabs me. And then it's just a fun game on top of that. I, I enjoy worker placements with attacking. I enjoy worker placements with a theme. And so that's it's really fun 
trying to figure out what to do. I've done multiple strategies, meaning I've done different strategies each time. Do I go for only white dice? Do I go for, um, you know, do I go for these guys or stick, stick straight to these? Your card here will dictate maybe what you do, and that's fun. And then you, there's a special power, and they're not created equal. Everyone has their own powers. So that's fun to, to gear towards. So I think it's a fun game. This is definitely a fun game. Everybody gets a destiny card from the beginning of the game, and you can pick up more, and it gives you, or it has the potential to give you more points based on a goal. So you start with a strategy in mind that maybe no one else has, or maybe there's a little bit of overlap. But somebody wants the most blue enemies, you want the most monsters, there's blue monsters. You're going to be fighting for both of them. So there's, there's conflict in this game, but it's indirect because it's worker placement. I'm not fighting Molly, I'm fighting against the monsters that she also wants to fight. There's a, there's a little bit of targeting because you can give somebody blame or shame. I can't remember off the top of my head. You give these tokens that give them negative points at the end. So there's a little targeting, but I think that overall I've really enjoyed this game each time I've played. Board Game Geek rating scale, I would go with like a 9 out of 10. I would give us an 8 out of 10. Look at you. Yeah. For theme, 10 out of 10. If that's a thing. That's not a thing. It is. Every time we get to multiples of 500 subscribers, we give away a free glitter painting of your favorite geeky thing. So make sure to subscribe now on YouTube. It could be you that wins. Champions of Midgard, we've presented the evidence. You be the judge.